elbow. Right? Fallen Angel on XFM 104.9. Well, we're back. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl's all a little bit, I don't know, he's a bit frustrated. He's sort of a bit sweaty and fed up today, aren't you, because of the heat. It's too much, though, isn't it? He's taken it out. It's he was sort of wanted to fight. You know, he doesn't use like a fight. I sort of like lead on him and try and rub his head. Yeah. But today he was he was sort of leading it. He was sort of like getting a little bit. I, I didn't know better. I just said it was sexual frustration. Well, I was like watching it, Rick. If you don't want me saying, I was watching. Not in that way. Just for watching. It was sort of like he's going, oh, I want to hit you. And yeah. I was thinking, does he want to hit me or does he want to do something else to me? Exactly. What were your thoughts, Carl? Exactly. I mean, I saw him sort of wrestling with you on the floor, and you clearly weren't enjoying it. But he was really. Yeah. What it. was that going on? What What's the change? Why are you suddenly sort of? Uh, what, 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 what are you trying to say? No, I'm not. I'm just saying it was weird that you suddenly, it was like you were, ooh. You're saying know. that I'm a bit, sort of a bit gay? No. Is that what you're saying? No, but what was... Suzanne accused me of that in the week. Why? For being a bit gay. She said, I'm sure you're gay. Why? Just because I was moaning about stuff. She said, oh, you're a drama queen. <laughs> 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 right, well, that's, oh, that's no, what, what were you moaning about? <sighs> Not just, having enough gay sex? No. Just, just, that, uh, that she didn't have a knob. Yeah, yeah. It's going, oh, why don't you oh. get yourself a nice little knob? Yeah. I mean, can I call you a Frank? <laughs> Could you wear this false beard? Yeah. It's yeah. just, um, well, we'll talk about it later. It was about the Seven Wonders. I just wasn't that impressed. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, <laughs> well, we'd say that, yeah. Well, we got a good top show That's coming up, haven't we? But if you are a little bit, kind of, just a little bit sexually, you know, don't be afraid to to let it out. I mean, if you want us to relieve you of it, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Let's have a little bit of Maggie May by oh, Rod. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Like a Georgie. Um, that's your favourite song, isn't it? Oh, that's we weird, are. isn't it? Strange, isn't it? That's weird. I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear Rod Stewart singing about a lovely lady, please, Carl. As would I. <laughs> you can picture whatever you want. <laughs> Maggie May on XFM 104.9. I'm looking today with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkins and Steve. Well, I I've only just read about this and I'm quite I don't know anything about it. This naked rambler, Steve Goff. Yeah. Uh, is he doing some kind of? He's doing a walk from Land's End to John O'Groats. Is he completely nude? Yeah, he's been arrested ten times on the way. Apparently. Right. It says here that Nora Goff, his mum. She's in her 70s. She's begged her son not to walk naked from Land's End to John O'Groats. She said, "I don't know where he gets this from." Certainly not me. I am and have always been quite conservative. He would never have been allowed to walk around the house without covering himself up. I wouldn't go as far as to say I'm ashamed of him, but I do not approve of what he is doing. Having said that, it's good to see him on the telly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be. It's not about anything. It's, it's not matter. embarrassing until they're famous, would exactly. it? However, however embarrassing yeah. it is. But um, well, my, I can't believe my son's a serial killer. Nice to see him on the telly. <laughs> it's it. Well, it's he looks like one. He's not yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, what is he doing? I don't. Steve wouldn't say he was, and he's not. He's no. just a rambler. Just, uh, but he's there, right? What's his, what's his motivation? He's just walking to. I don't know. Just it's just a nudist, I suppose. Right. And there's a picture in there, and uh, Carl looked at it, and he went, oh. What's the point of that? He went, well, look at him. He's got shoes and socks on. He's got a rucksack on. He's got a hat on. He's not nude. He's just got his knob out. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, he's got a full beard, thinking, oh, I want to hide some skin. <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. this little chap <laughs> needs the air. Yeah. I'll pop him out all the time I can. Yeah, no, they, they really annoy me. Because it's in the, in the supplement today as well, with the, with the mirror, right? And they've done, uh, <laughs> done a bit about nudists and that. Yeah. Again. Um... <laughs> Same problems all the time. <laughs> Go on. Um, there's like an old fella sat there, just uh, How do you know he's old? Well... <laughs> Why are you looking, Carl? If, why are you th yeah. Looking at his face, aren't you, presumably? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just saying he's old and he's sat there smoking a pipe. Sure. With his sandals on. Yeah. They're quite normal, just with his, his knob out. Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, but look, he always made the same mistake. He's got a little white deck chair. Yeah, yeah. If you're nudist... Don't go, don't go for white. Why? Just sitting on that, getting a bit clammy and stuff. Ah, the f <laughs> white. Don't go for white. Go for darker colours. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so do I, but I love it. I love the fact that he's just got loads of pictures of naked men. Yeah. Walking around <laughs> with loads of pictures I'm of naked men. I'm just saying, a d dirty arse on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've discussed the news before. Though. I don't understand the impulse at all. I don't. I do find it bizarre. I mean, there's a picture there of three men nude in a pub. Yeah. I d just having a chat. Yeah. <laughs> just having a chat. <laughs> oh, look at Carl carrying around those pictures. I mean, oh, okay, fair enough. Walking around outside, but indoors, 
in a pub nude? Well, it must be a nudist pub. A no, that must be a nudist holiday, I assume. Mm. As opposed to, like, the local. There uh, is, though, isn't there? There's a, there was a thing in Bizarre Magazine the other week where sure. there was a, a picture of some people. Uh, they've got an airline of their own now. What, nudists? Nudes. Nude airline? So you just, you can get on there. <laughs> you already start as soon as you get on. Sure. And, uh, but what's the point? Well, I'd be worried just about banging against things. <laughs> You know, so to speak. Yeah, my shoes and things. Or spilling the hot co- when the waitress comes along. What the hell is this? And she spilled hot coffee. Yeah, that's a good point. Would oh, she have that. to be nude? Would the, the stewardesses have to be I nude? I don't know. But that bit as well where they walk down the aisle and they have to check if you've buckled up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, excuse me miss, can you just- And over fifties, it's always over fifties. Right, yeah. So it'd be an old woman on the plane. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, can you just lift your- lift <laughs> it up so I can see the belt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Oh. Imagine dear. if you've got to go into the crash position. Oh God. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you see is your John Thomas. <laughs> John Thomas. As you, go, as you go crashing into a mountain. So if, and then what if you've got an abandoned ship? Yeah. I know. Well, uh, how would they explain that? Yeah. Get onto an island. <laughs> exactly. All right. Or being picked up by you know a passing ship. <laughs> yeah. Carl. You notice they also play volleyball a lot, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, you've always mentioned that, but yeah. I thought you were joking, but they love it. Yeah. <laughs> they said, they said, that's what they do. They get to this special holiday That camp. can only be, either they got the idea from sort of like Carry On Camping yeah. or Benny Hill, or they actually like it jiggling around as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. But is that safe? Well, I assume safe. so. You play volleyball with trousers on, don't you? I wouldn't have thought- Yeah, but there's a bit of, su- uh, like, support there. <laughs> I mean, I was watching, um, <laughs> Athletics, right, mm. the other week, Yeah, right? yeah. and uh, I was watching it because there's a lad who, who I went to school with, he's, like, winning gold medals and everything there, right, in the right, Olympics right, and right. stuff, right, so I was looking out for him. Uh, now, if you went to school with him, I'm assuming he's got three legs or something? No, no, he's, he's not. just a regular guy? He used to push me on, uh, on my go-kart, and sure. I, so I feel like I've, You've trained I was him, there yeah. Yeah, from the start, game. training him up a bit. Yeah. And, uh, watching the programme, and it was swimming in it. And, uh, I was watching that for a bit, getting a bit annoyed, cos, but, that butterfly stroke. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why they do that. No, nor do I. It's just hard work, it doesn't make you go any faster than, let's say, the, that, crawl. that stroke, the, the crawl. Yeah, don't do that, as, uh, that stroke on radio doesn't work, the crawl, yeah. So, uh, I was watching that, you know, that's, that's annoying. Yeah. And then they got on to the running bit, <laughs> and, uh, my mate's in this race. Yeah. Now, they do the side shot, don't they? So you can see who's in the lead. Sure. And then they do that front shot where it's absolutely pointless. The only reason to do the front shot, I I think, is to keep women interested. <laughs> because you can basically see his tackle going from left to right, being battered all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you looking? Seriously, you had no choice. If you wanted to watch it, it was like I was interested if he was going to win, but it's like... You know. But what, why did you turn over and watch Charlie's Angels instead? Because I wanted to see if he won the race. But, or flip back at the end. Just flip back to get the result if you don't. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or at least turn away or close your eyes on the front shot. No, I wasn't, I, I just, it's Suzanne weird. was happy, Suzanne was loving it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Just go to the other shot, but they were showing you the front shot <laughs> and running along there. They could have just shown the top half, but they didn't. Sure. It was there. <laughs> There's his heads moving along at 25 miles an hour. Yeah. Well, I think you're meant to see the running, the actual legs moving. It's an athletics coverage, isn't it? It's sort of like... But they don't show you a shot from behind. Did you want that? Oh, no, I didn't want that either. <laughs> 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 that sounds record. like you were disappointed. Yeah. Play a record. What are we having? Play a radio ad? Yeah, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Incidentally, last week, you remember, we began the show by talking about knobs. Yeah. I think we've got a bit more knob news this week. The knob is going up, is it? <laughs> the knob news is on After the way. After Radiohead, more cock. <laughs> Radiohead and go to sleep. That's not to you. Please don't go to sleep. We've got another hour and 35 minutes of fun chat and great, great music on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Pilky, a little K-man Pilkers, little baldy twat mank whinging, a little bit bent Pilkers. <laughs> oh, there he is. There he is there. Now, Rick, you may remember that last week we opened with, um, some quality, uh, knob news. Knob news, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, 
It was um, Hitler's Hitler, um, <laughs> Hitler's knob. Hitler's knob was one of them. That just that just sparked off into a whole uh, a whole bunch of other yeah, uh, yeah. knob related discussions. Yeah. And I'm pleased so far to see that we're almost at the halfway mark uh, for this first hour. And so far we've only talked about nudity and or todgers. Yeah. So excellent work from us. Well done, lads. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Doctor Fox and the rest of the Sony uh, Award <laughs> Committee listening to this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, more knob news. I don't know if there's a jingle on. for that, maybe. Uh, oh, you nearly had the eye out. Knob news. <laughs> knob news, excellent. This is uh, an extraordinary story. Um, a woman tried to sue her bosses for £210,000 after finding a cooked penis in a canteen stew. Hospital cleaner Sophie, something, 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 I don't, can't really pronounce that name, was eating goulash for lunch and could not cut one of the lumps of meat. <laughs> oh, you can see where it's going. I've got so many questions already. I know. She picked it up and tried to chew it, but it was too tough. Then she inspected it with workmates, who all agreed it was a penis. <laughs> Imagine that discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Miss McLatter said she vomited for the rest of the day, instantly became a vegetarian, <laughs> <laughs> and had to have psychiatric help. It's not known whether the organ was from a human. The case continues. Well, it can be found out, so that's one thing. Obviously, the doctors aren't confused. They're not going, I don't know, I've never seen one like it. Yeah. Uh, also, why is she eating goulash? <laughs> I know. I mean, that is my first question. Why? <laughs> yeah. You got your uh, oh lunch oh what do you want I oh, fancy some goulash <laughs> yeah oh some gooly lash gooly lash Thanks like very much it indeed Lancashire cockpot <laughs> oh, is brilliant. on the menu brilliant only five pounds fifty uh um w uh wangers and mash I'd love some wangers and mash please if you've got any knob related puns. Knob food related puns then call XFM on three four two six <laughs> one four oh nine four. Ricky dot Gervais at XFM dot co dot UK. Call Chris Miles at Radio One dot XFM dot <laughs> Wingin Mank. Yeah. Cock coke. Uh Cock a van. Cock a van. It's already done for there's you. Some, there's Wangs and Max, Cock a van, Lancashire Cockpot. Uh you know. <laughs> That's just off the top of our brains. Yeah. So if so you've got if any you of your own, keep them to yourself, we're not interested. What do you make of that uh knob news? I need to in a hospital. I don't think so. No, oh, yes, it was a hospital cleaner. You're right. Oh, God. I know how your mind's thinking already. There's been a mix up. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a mix up. What kind of mix up? I love that. What some bloke's gone in, some lesbian's gone in, what a sex change. She's got a carrot. For a <laughs> yeah, a stew steak. <laughs> steak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be great. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a doctor, you butcher. It's not funny. There is some, uh, some other news, uh, whilst we're doing the knob news, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just cram this one in. Um, there was some story on some news website about some lad who, uh, wasn't happy with what, what, what he'd been given. Right. What do you mean? He had a, he had a knob? No, no, uh, no, he wanted to have an op. He wasn't um, happy with what God had given him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the look what the Lord had popped downstairs <laughs> for him. Sure. And, uh, Sorry, no, wait a minute, was he a bloke who wanted it? Yeah, fella, yeah, fella. And he what, he wanted a, a he, what, he didn't want a knob, or he wanted a bigger knob? He a bigger one. Right, okay. And, okay. uh, cost five grand. Right. Um, and they made a mess of it. Well, what do they, how, how do they make a mess of it? Don't know, it, c it came out <laughs> smaller than he went in with. Well, no, what do you mean? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know all the ins and outs. <laughs> 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 oh it God! Was, uh, it's just well, like he, borrowed, a, he borrowed the money off his mum. There's been a slight mix-up. <laughs> he <laughs> borrowed the money off his mum. I love that. <laughs> How bad is what that? What do you want for your birthday, son? <laughs> yeah, interesting. Thanks, mum, for asking. A couple of bits of news as well. Hello, doctor. How did it go? Um, well, well, firstly, don't look under the managers and don't have the goulash for lunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 it, it was smaller than you went nah, in with. Nah, we got five grand. Why? Just give me five grand. <laughs> tell me what it's for. <laughs> you can have it if you tell me what it's for. Well, look at that. Oh, you need a bigger one. Yeah, definitely. There's the money. <laughs> yeah. On you go. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> what did he say to the doctor then? That's rubbish. I didn't read all the ins and outs. I just, like I said, I saw just it. Just look for the picture. <laughs> they were on that picture. <laughs> <laughs> but you just thought, uh, well, thanks for it. You just thought you'd pop that one in. Thanks. Yeah, that's the, that's the end, uh, yeah. Nob News Extra, yeah. Tire Record, Carl. Mm -hmm. So if you've got any Nob News, um, we've got one more show left. Send that to ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and we'll hopefully get that Nob News on air next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Some Dizzy Rascal. Oh, Dizzy Rascal, yeah, he's one of the hot new English rappers. Let's play it. <laughs> Loosen your hold. South. That's great, and I love that one. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Good Carl, choice, Rick, good choice. Carl, cheers, cheers, cheers. What are you thinking, Carl? What have you been doing this week? What's been going on? 
Yeah. Uh, you'd be miserable miserable because of the heat, obviously. That's getting me down. Yeah. Uh, it's just the way people wander about as well with next to now on. Yeah. Um, I'm always amazed by, uh, the men. It's just a certain breed of man. Uh, guys, sometimes it's kind of builders, mechanics, taxi drivers, van drivers, but not necessarily. Students, all sorts of guys. And you'll sort of watch them walking down the street. They'll be walking down the street. Girls, you know, will see in their sort of summer gear. And it's literally, you know, eyes, you know, look at those legs. Oh, knockers. Oh, I can't believe my luck. Oh, you know, and they're sort of talking to their mates. They're checking it. Oh, it's an arse. I can't believe it. Oh. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's like they sort of forget. There's like some kind of amnesia that sweeps over them during the, the winter. Like months. it's a surprise. Yeah. And then it's like every time summer rolls around again and girls pop, they go, I can't believe it. Where have they been? They're back. Yeah. Yeah. And they get so excited. Oh, excuse me now, but you had tits over there all winter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Uh, Bloody hell. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's great to see him again. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets, <laughs> us, he gets us sort of walks over and they go, where have they gone? <laughs> they happened? just don't say anything. They just like <laughs> get on with it. They, they're they're <laughs> <Yeah>. reminded. <laughs> yeah. They completely forget. <laughs> yeah. For a sort of half the year. <laughs> uh, there was a fellow this morning, I just nipped out, having a cup of tea, reading the paper, reading that bit about nudists and that. Sure. Thing. And, uh, little old fella. Must have been... Seventy-five. Okay. Walks past. Shoe socks. Sort of shorts, but because he's old, I don't think he's got like a normal pair of shorts. So we're like suit pants, but short. <laughs> <laughs> so really smart shorts. <laughs> I've never seen before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the thing is, with, with him being old and thin. Yeah. It's just, don't do that. Don't walk around. What, the legs? Put, the legs in the back. He'd look like a little tortoise without his shell on. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to see a tortoise without its shell on. Yeah. Just to see if it would run really fast and go, this is brilliant. Just yeah. scamper along. I saw grotesque thing. I saw, I think it's Britain's fattest man. I'm not sure. Oh. He was huge. I mean, I don't wish him any ill, but so big. It was ludicrous. He was waddling down, um, Oxford Street and he was, I mean, genuinely, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of you know, ginormous mm. people. Rick Waller, for instance, yeah. turns my stomach. This guy was twice <laughs> as big. He was extraordinary. And he sat down on a big bench and literally took up the whole space. And he, he reached into his bag, he's having his lunch, and he was eating an apple. And I really felt like I wanted to slap him on the back and go, it's a bit late for that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's probably starting now. He's probably starting thinking that I'm gonna make a change. And imagine if you'd have said that. Yeah. And he'd have, it'd have been awful, wouldn't it? Yeah. He took, he, he cut it in half, put it between two slices of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, and I don't know how you get and that. And waited for a pig to come past, yeah. shoved it in his mouth, <laughs> exactly. to swallow the owl. I don't oh. know how he gets that big. And he was like, he'd come out to sort of soak up some of the sun, you know. Well, you look better with a tan. <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. Was he wearing loose black clothes? <laughs> he was, of course that, he was wearing That worked up clothes. to a point. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> then, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there, it's not falling anywhere. There's like vertical stripes. Yeah. To make it yeah. Just do it we pass and think it's night. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> so, Carl. So, little. yeah, so, so that's, that's, you know, that's been annoying me with the weather and that. Yeah. And then, uh... I love the warm weather. Oh. Although I can't sleep at night. I had, I had two hours in front, just went and lay down in front of the window, in front of the French window, just because it was just too hot last night. But if I can sleep, I love hot weather. I love walking around when it's sunny. It's better for you. People are usually happier in hot weather. <laughs> the sun is good for you. I mean, it, it has been hot. I mean, it's 100 degrees. It's probably too hot to work, but... Mental. I can't, I can't think straight and stuff. You know your little baldy head, isn't it bad for it? Because it just... Doesn't it get you, make, make your brain a little bit hot? Well, <laughs> I, I mean, I've just got my head on show. What about the nudists? <laughs> 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 worry about them before you worry about me. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, another another thing that happened in the week, um, you know, I've just had builders round, sorting the kitchen out. Yeah, right? sure. Uh, so virtually skint. But another problem happens. Boiler starts playing up. Right. Right. So uh, and you've got to have a shower in this weather. You've got to, you've got to be able to have a shower on that and freshen off and what have you. Well, I have a shower every day anyway. I mean, two sometimes, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah. If you haven't got any hot water. You can't, can you? Uh, right. Cold showers, all right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Go on. So anyway, so, uh, fella comes round. Yeah. 90 quid. 90 quid? 90 quid. Um, all he did, turns up, says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just bang it. Just 90 bang the, quid? Bang the boiler. <laughs> That's 90 quid. <laughs> Last time I banged a boiler, it cost me 90 quid. <laughs> and there was a, there was a lot of leakage then. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, you know. I understand where you're going <laughs> Yeah. I do sympathize. <laughs> but do you know, like, I, I catch him out as well, do you know, like, you know, I know they're they're up to no good yeah. and stuff. They don't earn the money. Sure. 
and he was in the bathroom, so I sort of creep up and I try and stick my head around the door to see what he's what, up to. What, when a bloke in the bathroom? <laughs> right. Where That's weird, isn't it? So you creep up to a man in the bathroom and put your head around when he's out and seeing you? Go on, though. Fair enough. Right, do you want to go over what happened that time when we were in the pub and I go to the toilet and you're trying to get in? <laughs> what happened? Is that normal? Go on, what happened? It's gone. I'm not, it's gone. I'm not ashamed. What happened? <laughs> go on, go on, go on. Say it. <laughs> Say it. What happened? <laughs> well, don't start a story and then don't finish no, it. Or we'll do it later. <laughs> he, was, he was in the he was in the cubicle and he got in the cubicle to have a piss to avoid me annoying him, right? So what I did, I got some of that liquid soap and I just put it over and squirted on him. And he came out going, look, it looks like someone's just effing jizz on me. I've got effing jizz on me back. I, <laughs> I had to walk through Soho with an army back. <laughs> I was walking to so and um, wh when was it we had to go to the uh when we went to the Ivy with those people? Uh Wednesday or something like that, yeah. We had a business meeting, right? right? And uh well, I what I was we were walking out of the Ivy, it was about half eleven and I was going down Old Compton Street and as I got to just going past Mamma Mia, something hit me on the shoulder. I looked down and obviously it was bird shit. But just for, <laughs> for just for a split second I thought it looked like jizz. And I was, <laughs> I just thought, Oh god because no, <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of woke up and I thought, right, I went, all, I got to wash my hands and like get in. It was, obviously wasn't jizz. It was just, it was pigeon shit or something, right? But I, I had this pamphlet once when I was at Ulu. Terence Higgins Trust left this pamphlet and it was all stuff like safe sex and it was stuff like. <laughs> It, honestly, I swear, it said things like, you don't have to have four people <laughs> in the course. It said you can do lots of other things with your lover, like... <laughs> it said like, um, like coming to some fruit, e.g. a melon. It, it, it says, um, with friends, um, just come on the back of one of them, right? And then this is the bit that made me think, and I thought, oh my god, when I looked down sort of my shoulder, it says... <laughs> Come out of a window! <laughs> yeah, on any passing celebrity. <laughs> oh god! Oh, oh god, I'll get that pamphlet. If anyone's got that pamphlet, it was brilliant. So, uh, yeah. Good, right, well, um, let's play a record. Do you reckon Noel <laughs> stuff like this on his show? He's back. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. <laughs> Sniff and ask. On XFM one four point nine. Before the before that, we had uh, we had uh, Spunky News. <laughs> spunky News coming up. Monkey News. That's the sort of linked. This is uh, Doctor Fox. Is no better than this. No, you must see we're getting better now. Yeah. Have you got any uh, other news there, Carl? Uh, well, you were just talking about uh, bird muck. <laughs> <laughs> what a classy <laughs> show this is. <laughs> 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 yeah. Better that, um... I imagine someone just having a barbecue tuned into this. Yeah. Can you turn the I radio off? It's talking about coming out of windows again, <laughs> darling. <laughs> it's putting me off my sausages. Now, while I was walking down, down the street and this pigeon, sparrow, whatever, uh, <coughs> did its thing and it landed on my ear <coughs> and, uh, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I thought, well, I'm not going to wipe it off. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because I don't want to get it on my hands. Right? <laughs> so I thought I'd, I thought I'd leave it till I get home. So it's probably <laughs> so about. So you went to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, met some friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got yeah. Went, went, on, went on the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, so it was best man, so after the speeches, <laughs> yeah. um, that is brilliant. Oh. Uh, no, it, it was on there for, about, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. Brilliant. Uh, get home and, uh, get Did it not kind of slowly ooze down your neck? No, no, it was fairly hard. Right. And, um, <laughs> sort of corroded me ear. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking God. about? Why know. did you leave it there, man? Why not just wipe it off with something? I, you can, I, I, I can anything. walk around pop, with- Pop in a news agent and buy some tissues. Well, then I look stupid. What? what where is the bird's muck on your ear? Brilliant. They're all they're all wearing that now. But no, what, what is it? The it's oh. alkaline. No, it's al really strongly alkaline, isn't it? Or is it acidic? I don't know. Maybe someone knows. Is bird yeah. muck acidic or alkaline? But it's corrosive. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Weird. Weird. It, it didn't seep into your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen. 
Do you want to do, uh, do you want to set up Songs of Phrase? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, if you've not heard the show before... I thought we weren't doing this this week. I, I thought, thought we, we weren't. No, we'll, we'll do it once, right? And then next week's the last one, so we'll do Rockbusters. Leave, leave that might on. be the last one ever, depending on whether Carl decides to come back yeah. in October or not. Exactly. I'm bored. Right? Yeah. I told you I'm bored of it. Why are you bored with it? I get bored quick with stuff. Yeah. I told, I told Suzanne the other night, I had luxury she was. I haven't got, not ri got rid of her yet. She's, you know what I mean? <laughs> Things... You put, you put on her soft music though <laughs> first, didn't you? You didn't just like, start getting that around and... Yeah, you, you, know, you, know, you know you're a very lucky girl. Sorry? Well, I usually get bored with you and that. Yeah. Oh, dude. You're lucky you haven't pissed off. Yeah. Do you want all the champagne or what? Well, she was God. annoyed the other God, night. what's that on your ear? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Pigeon shit, aren't it? We are walking to the pictures, right? To go yeah. and see, uh, Bruce Almighty. Sure. Why? And, uh, just something to say, innit? Yeah. So you were you were trying to sneak in the back. <laughs> so uh, on the way, cutting across Leicester Square, uh -huh. and uh, those fellas who sell roses, he comes over. Do you want one? Do you want one? So don't do that. She's allergic to them, right? So so he'd go away. Yeah. She got all annoyed about that because she's not allergic to them. Well, she's not allergic now, but I, I, they're about three quid each. But the point of mankind is what? not that she really wants a rose; it's that you're willing to spend three pounds on her. Taking us to the pictures. <laughs> How much was that? That was eight quid each. Mm. Did you pay for it though? But didn't you, you have a, if I if I know you, you had her dressed up as a small child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me you, and my son, please. Or you've made her sit on your shoulders and wear a long coat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, listen, songs are phrase then. Oh. You paid for it to go in and then you went and had a pint while she watched it. <laughs> yeah, there's no point in both of us seeing it, but tell me about <laughs> tell it. Tell me what it's you? like. Oh, right, songs are phrase. So let's explain what songs are phrase is. You do it. Okay, oh, really? Um, if you think that Carl is bored with life, then you will be even more bored once <laughs> you've heard this particular quiz. The gist of it is that Carl has taken a well known phrase well, or saying. No, stop me there. Not a well known phrase. Something that he said once. On this show. Yeah, probably. And he's somehow com uh, compiled together a number of different songs which have somehow <laughs> built up that particular phrase or sentence. Um, if it's anything about Chinese people, Philip Bailey will be involved. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay, let's hear it then, Carl. <laughs> Right. Alright, I don't oh, know what that I is. I don't know what that was. This is appalling. I don't know this what is appalling. that is! Carl! Carl! I do not know what that is! What is the phrase? I just was saying last week about everyone's raving about Galileo. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're <laughs> not. No, no, they're not. No, that sounds they're like not. a sort of B-side from yeah. the Buggles. Everyone's raving about Beyonce and uh, Robbie Williams. Yeah. They're not. They're not. They're, people they're going pop what, idol. What are you into? Galileo's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forget it. Forget it. No. <laughs> Placebo, song for Carl there. That's special needs on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgerton. We were doing songs of phrase. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh god. So what is this phrase? What is the phrase, Carl? Last week we were talking about Galileo. Right. And I just was saying, <laughs> years ago, I can't remember now, when was it? When was he doing his thing? End of the 16th century, I think. Right. And he was messing about, trying to find out about the speed of light or something, is it? No, he did lots of he did lots of stuff going along. All I was saying is Gravity, back then, yeah, surely yeah. everyone was saying, "Stop messing with that, make us a telly." You know what I mean? There was other things that people would have been happier with, sure, back then. Like the, yeah. Like the, the so now. the phrase is the phrase exactly is what the well known uh, phrase is what. Uh, Galileo. Uh, oh, it goes like this, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So it's Galileo, stop S talking to me talking about, about science. science. Make, Make me, me television. television. Make me television. Yeah. So you email in with with the bands and that. Brilliant. <laughs> right, let's uh, that, that, that is rock bottom. Of course I mean, it the, is. the well known phrase being Galileo, stop talking to me about science. Make me television. <laughs> As a well-known <laughs> phrase, is the one of the weirdest things I've ever, forget jizz out of windows and things like that. That is the weirdest thing I've heard on radio as a competition. Can we have that one next week? <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Well, here, here are the prizes. If you, if you think, Rick, that the, <laughs> if you think the quiz has hit rock bottom, wait, wait, wait till I tell you these prizes. Yeah, no, brilliant. Um. Oh. 
I know that um, we're very much pushing new music on XFM and it's an alternative music yeah. station, so you'll be pleased that we're giving away now that's what I call Music 55, <laughs> featuring the likes of Busted and uh, Daniel Beddingfield. Brilliant. Uh, you really know how to cater to our audience, don't you? The best dance album in the world, that includes um, DJ Sammy, Scooter, <laughs> and uh, Liberty X on there. <laughs> so I look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, this is not so bad. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, uh, a live DVD of a, <coughs> pardon me, a performance uh, at some, <coughs> pardon me again, but, <coughs> <Got Anyway. off>. <coughs> <coughs> that basically sums up the prizes. So, uh, I won't tell you the rest, they're all monotonous. But, uh, anyway, <coughs> I think those crisps, Rick, have gone down the wrong way. <laughs> or, although I was eating goulash earlier. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. So, anyway, yeah, that's that's some of the prices. <laughs> and you can win some tat. So if you can identify these artists. It's a well-known phrase. Galileo, stop talking to me about science. Make me television. <laughs> Just it's appalling. Bit easy this week, I think. I those, yeah. Play a record, Carl. I mean, it's ridiculous. Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. The Pixies. <laughs> the Pixies on XFM 104.9 holiday song. He's talking about um, people coming around and just banging the boiler and charging 90 quid. Um, I think it was last Christmas. We had a dripping tap, right? And uh, it started off just dripping a little bit. And then. After a couple, I thought, you know, we'll get that sorted out. We couldn't actually turn the tap. Couldn't, it was just solid where the, the, the washer had gone. And then, uh, over Christmas, like, it's like, before Christmas, um, it just started flowing. It was just like on. And I was thinking, this is terrible. It was totally worse. It was a hot tap. And, uh, of course, everything, the caretaker had gone away. Everything had been closed down. So I called out an emergency plumber. Christmas. Yeah. Like, he couldn't get it to turn the tap off. Right? So, um, he was trying and trying, and in the end he said, well, what I could do is I could just squash the pipe, right, and cut the pipe and squash it, and then you could change the whole thing. I went, yeah, whatever, right, because I can't have this, I guess. So, uh, he said, I've got to go to the van, and he got this tool, came up to squash the pipe, it was only a young lad, right, wasn't strong enough. So I had to help him squash the pipe. Right. He squashed the pipe, cut it, put a little nozzle on it, you know, just to seal it, right, and uh, I was 180 quid. 180 quid? And I was going to say, Surely that's half mine. Yeah. I helped it, and I was sort of being sarcastic. When Johnny was there, I was going, how much was that tool you, he went, oh, it was only about nine quid. I went, pays for itself, isn't it? Yeah. And I was going, could I get one of them? He was going, yeah, get them anywhere. Oh, obviously, yeah. didn't it? And then he went, I wrote a check for 90 quid, and he went, oh, I didn't charge you for the nozzle on the end. I went, no. He went, I said, how much is that then? He said, two fifty. I said, I'll leave you cash for that. Two pounds fifty. <laughs> Hundred and eighty two pounds fifty. So he hadn't even really sorted the problem out. But what can you do what can you do? You know, yeah. he wasn't ripping me off. That's the prices. Yeah. He's not gonna go, I'll tell you what, mate, because you helped me, uh call it quit. <laughs> yeah. Buy me lunch. <laughs> yeah. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. My mate was locked out of his uh flat once, um and he went out and shut the door behind him and that was it. And he'd looked through the letterbox and he could see his keys. Mm -hmm. Right? Phoned a locksmith, says, Look, can you come round? I can see my keys. Right? I just have to go out, and he went, well, yeah, but I don't, that doesn't matter. I said, I'm going to try it, it's 90 quid. And he went, 90 quid? He went, but I can see the keys. He went, yeah, I can get them for you. And he went, and my man said, you're going to come round, you're going to charge me 90 quid, and you're going to scoop my keys up with a bent coat hanger. And the locksmith said, have you got a bent coat hanger, mate? It's brilliant. But it's a fair point, isn't it? It's it a I mean? fair point, that's it. And what, what can you do? <laughs> yeah. I'd have gone, ha, thanks for the expert advice, and then asked the neighbour for a bent coat hanger. And they went, well, we'll call it under quid. <laughs> yeah. But that's more expensive than the locksmith. Well, yeah, because you're going to illegal traders. <laughs> exactly. We've got no licence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got to yeah. pay a little bit more in case we get fined. <laughs> exactly. But that's, yeah. that's what was going on when, you know, the, the fellow was around the other day fixing the boiler in the bathroom. Just wanted to make sure that he was, that he was working on it, because it all went quiet in there. Mm. He had the door shut. I'm trying to... Have a little quick, quick sort of peep, <laughs> seeing if he's doing anything. I push the door. <laughs> like, this sounds. We're just pushing the door slowly, and he's going, "Don't come in." <laughs> he's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> well, what was he doing? Don't know. But then he's like, three down. Probably doing a crossword again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what annoys me. The, the way that you know, it's all secret. You're not coming in, and you, you hear the odd bang now and again. He's probably sat there, crossword, three down, giving it the old. 
Just now and again. With his foot. Just, just kick just the foot. Just annoying. Yeah. How much did you charge him? 90 quid. It was just under 90 quid. Yeah. Yeah. And all he said was, you know, give it a bang. If you don't work again, give it a bang. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> is that an air block? And they just like, what is it? I don't know. It's not that complicated. You wouldn't think a boil is that complicated. It's not like understanding, you know, how uh, a fast breeder works or a computer. It's a big lump of metal without water in it. How, how can we not know how that works? Yeah. We were discussing yesterday, me and Glenn were trying to work out how a fridge works. Right. It's pretty cool. Magic? It is the magic comes down the electricals into the frozen peas. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can't still I, I know it's something to do with the the hydrofluorocarbons are, can exist at much lower temperatures without freezing. So when they enter the fridge, sort of under pressure, as they flow round, because the the pressure goes down, they take energy from the the. It's, play per, records, it's perhaps a discussion to have in the pub, but not on the air. Play records, I play. still can't figure out. I've never quite understood how a plane stays in the air. It always unnerves Sorry. me when I'm in a plane. Turning a tap on, getting water. <laughs> I'm basically going to go, <laughs> Cargo's walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's a bit of science for you. Go on. Right. Um, read the other day. Yeah. If you dug a big hole, right. Oh, God. Started digging, say in, uh, wherever, the Trafalgar Square, right. Yeah. Uh, you dig a big hole and you keep digging. Yeah. And you go right through the earth. Right. Out to the other side. Yeah. So you, you're somewhere in Australia or something, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you go back to, come back again, come back to London. Right. Stand next to the hole, jump in it. Apparently, you can jump through the world in 42 minutes. <laughs> it's interesting. But then I was thinking, will you fall? And then when you come out the other end, would you fall back again? Well, yeah, you would, wouldn't you? What would happen is, you'd accelerate uh, 10 metres per second, per second, to the centre of the earth, you but you'd have, but you know, you'd, but, but you'd have such inertia, you'd nearly go as far out the other end, before, it was like a bungee jump, so you'd nearly get as far as the other end, and then you'd go back again, and you'd keep going until, back and forth, getting, getting further and further away from making it, until you went, duh, 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 sort of back and forth in the centre, and then you'd stay still in the centre. Have you drilled a hole through the <laughs> earth? <laughs> get in touch. Email xfm.co.uk <laughs> and just let us know how you got on. Did you get to the other side? Did you get to Australia? Did you buy one of those funny cork hats? Did how you see Paul Hogan? How does a fish work? <laughs> <laughs> Darkness growing on me, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I bored, I lost him, didn't I, in a little conversation. Yeah, there. you were talking about quantum physics, to be Yeah, clear. I was just explaining what a black hole was, because we were talking about like that as well last night. And just halfway through, he just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put his headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, it's, the thing, it's the thing about Carl is he speaks with such authority about things that he thinks he knows about. Monkeys. And when you try, yeah, and when you try to explain to him about stuff, you know, he thinks, he goes, no, of course ghosts exist. And yeah. you try to explain to him why it's conceivable they don't. Ah, no, no. He can't, he can't be bothered with that. Yeah, you? He's, you did all your learning at about twelve, didn't you? Yeah, but I'm still picking bits up now. <laughs> <laughs> Said without irony. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brilliant. What have you learned recently? Anything interesting recently, you learned? Darwin. That's why I was asking you about him. Right. Yeah, so, Darwin. We know what he did, do you? I don't know what he did. I just read the other day that they've they've got a treatment for whatever illness he had. I thought it was a bit late. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine that saying that to his family? What did Darwin do? What did Darwin do? You I don't know. know. You were um, you were just trying to explain it to me, but I'm, I'm busy doing stuff, aren't I? I can't take it all in whilst I'm sorting the ads out, putting CDs in. You know what I mean? Well, he, he, Kicking he, off the knob news. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he formulated the theory of evolution based on natural selection. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but wait, wait, though. Do you, you think that's good? Do you think he's, you know, well done? You're impressed with that? Because you're not impressed with things like, you know, you famously said, uh, um, Newton, so it said gravity, but it was already there. If we'd have been floating around, it'd been a problem, we weren't, so I keep out of it. That's what you said. You said, Einstein, I've never used EMC squared in my life, but the bloke who invented the video recorder, I watch one a week. <laughs> so I wonder if you're impressed by Darwin formulating, I think, the most important scientific theory since, uh, Newton's laws. Has it made a difference? Or, or whatever he said, 
would it have happened anyway? You can't do that. You're not allowed to say that. You can't say, oh, well done, I'd have found it eventually anyway. You can't do that. You've got to give people their dues, you know what I mean? But, but now it's difficult to find stuff because there's less to find out now. <laughs> it's not a competition. But on what scale? On what scale are you lo looking at? Why do you mean there's less to find out? Well, now, I mean, they, they're bringing stuff out that... Do you know what I mean? It's just... The iPod. Well, yeah. Sure. Didn't see the point in that, no. the iPod. Do you know, he actually listed the three songs he'd ever want to carry around with him. I can't remember what they were. What are the three what songs you'd carry Killing the Georgie. Killing the Georgie, yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? Probably have, uh, Elvis in the ghetto. Right. Yeah. Moving. Living in the city. Stevie do you know what I like? Do you know why that? Because that's, that's like a little film to him. Yeah. That's three songs where there's a little story. He knows the ending. Yeah. But it's someone singing it to him. <laughs> a <laughs> little... Just, just put them on it. A th how many songs can I hold? Well, seven and a half thousand. Seven thousand. Put that on. Seven and a half thousand times. Sure. Well, you don't need to, do you? I mean, that is like that joke. The, the, the wish. Put, uh, imagine putting on seven and a half thousand. You know that, that joke about... You got three wishes. It says a never-ending bottle of Guinness, and you got a second wish. You gotta have two more of these. Yeah, uh, it's, you don't need to put them on seven and a half thousand times, do you? No, you don't. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> never mm. mind, Carl. Never mind. Uh, answers rushing in. We should point out for the quiz. Most of them agreeing that uh, it's pointless. Um, some people <laughs> have called it it's songs of phrase. Of course, um, some people have referring to it now as songs of arse. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, more than appropriate, but you'll be pleased to know that it's ending this week, and next week we've got the return of the even more pitiful Rockbusters. For the last one. That's back for the last one. We'd perhaps also need your petitions to Carl. If you want us to stay on the air, then you need to petition Carl, giving good reasons why he should stay, why this show isn't boring, or rather why he shouldn't be bored by it. I mean, you're bound to be bored as listeners, but obviously, uh, he's running out of steam now. Why don't you, wh wh what are you fed up with? You're just fed up with, uh, in general, are you? I mean, you want your Saturdays back, do you? Just want a bit of a life back, that's all. But, but you don't do anything with your life you when you've got it. Why don't you do this instead of, like, your day job? Can't. It's more important than your day job, isn't it? That's what earns the company money and that. Know what I mean? Well. So. Why don't you do, why don't you do a regular show then? Sack someone who's, you know, quite well, frankly not putting their way. I've done that. I did that years ago. What done do you it, mean? Done it. I told you, I've done a lot of stuff. Boxing. Done. <laughs> tick. Dancing. Done. No, you turned out. The place was shut. <laughs> yeah, but... Dancing? When did you do dancing? That's when he, t when he went and said, I want to do dancing, and he went along to the, the place, and it was shut, and that was it. And he said, I didn't do it anymore. That's not doing it, is it? Boxing, he had a fight with one lad, then the lad beat him up, and he didn't go again. <laughs> Oh dear, it's pathetic. Well, anyway, yeah, so this uh, is basically our penultimate show. Next week's the, the final, and uh, we're all looking forward to that enormously. Yeah. But uh, that may be it forever then, and uh, this, this, you know, all for one, all, all, you know, one for all, all for one, the Three Musketeers, gone forever. Yeah. I, for one, will be pleased. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to get some of these taped, because I like coming in sort of, um, you know. Internetly, Rick, don't be afraid to nick as many CDs as you see fit on that last show. I, that people have already nicked them. No, I know, but I just mean, take whatever you want. Is that Four Non Blondes is still there, isn't it? I think it's still there. Because I don't want that to be nicked. Yeah. And I've got a feeling, um, there's, because I don't think there's any Smiths in the library, but there's quite a lot of Gina G. Really? <sighs> what? What was that sigh for? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. What? Ooh. Play a record. Yeah. Monkey News is on the way. Plus the results. This isn't radio. Keep you've got to keep talking or playing music. Play some music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heart of Gold by Neil Young on XFM one hundred four point nine. Um, Pop Idol, of course, begins this evening. I know you're looking forward to it. Really. Yeah, love it. It's love always it. a joy, and especially those early rounds with the. Uh, the, the mentors, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are always extraordinary. Uh, but that's the only reason I watch. I mean, I can't be bothered with the later contest. It's just watching the freaks for the first couple of weeks. Uh it's an absolute uh, pleasure. Yeah, I sort of like watching the judges. They're good as well. Oh, the judges are good, yeah. I like yeah. the fact they, they they've got their little shtick, you know, the, the special jokes they've obviously written or just waiting to get them in. Yeah. It's just yeah. great. But I love when Pete Waterman cries as well. Does he cry? Sometimes if he's moved by it. <laughs> he's better than bloody Bobby Davin. <laughs> like it, yeah. yeah. Rosie Ribbon made him cry. <laughs> He just wells up and then <laughs> like that. that's good. I like that. He yeah. talks a lot of old ass, doesn't he, Pete Waterman? I sort of quite like oh, him. Oh, I don't know. I find him irritating. Well, it's like yeah. he genuinely thinks he's up there with Lennon and McCartney. That's one of the great kind of pop Svengalis of his time. Yeah, and you know, you I don't know. You wrote songs for Sunita. Well, don't yeah, let's, let's, let's not let's not knock him. There's foxes on there. 
True. No, no, Dr. Fox is a genius. <laughs> and obviously can step in if there's any medical emergencies. Um, Rick Waller, you'll be pleased. Now, I'm a, obviously, as you know, I'm a huge Rick Waller fan. Um, not only has he got a great singing voice, but he's, <laughs> he really is a picture, mm. <laughs> isn't he? Um, no, I know it's a bit harsh. I've said it before, but I d he does, um, he does make me a little sick to the stomach when I look at Rick Waller. Um, and I, to be honest with you, it's his own fault. It, you know, he, got, he went in Celebrity Fit Club, he had a chance to sort things out, and his attitude was wrong, and um, he didn't trim down. And uh, he's, for want of a better phrase, a bloater. Mm. And slightly grotesque. But, you know, he's in the paper this week saying that it was all because of his image, he didn't fit the stereotype of what pop stars should look like, blah, 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 blah. Well, he's disgruntled <laughs> by this, he's got a great singing voice. Well, um, he has got a great singing voice. But the point is this, Rick, the point is this, since the days of Elvis, since the days of Bing Crosby... He's not as bad as Elvis. <laughs> no, but you're a star because you have to have the whole package, the voice, yeah, the sex appeal, everything. We know yeah. how it works, kids buy it, it's pop music, that's what pop music is. Mm. You know, if you want to be uh, a big fat bloater, you've got to at least be as good as Barry White. He isn't. Or Pavarotti. Or Pavarotti. And so anyway, he set up a, um, he set up an organisation. He's already got a band, you know, he's got So a band. you're saying, get over it, the world should revolve around looks. But, well, no, I'm saying pop music, that's what pop music is. I mean, this kind of obsession with, he should get a chance, you but know? not on record. No, I know, but, um, be a session might... back, be, be a backing singer. The point yeah. is, this kid wants to be a star. He wants to be a star, doesn't he? Yeah. That's the point. He doesn't want to sing and make a couple of records. He just wants to be a star. He wants I'd, to be a I'd, I'd have thought that's that's the real rub. That actually he's not being truthful with himself. Yes. He doesn't just want to make beautiful music and sing well. He he wants to be you know carried around on a sedan chair and adored. Imagine that. I know. I'd be, the he'd have to have a lot of money to pay for the entourage that can carry yeah, him. Yeah, the four elephants needed. But he's got a, a company now. He set it up with his dad. It's a management company. It's called Star Search. And basically, he's hoping to break the fickle industry, um, you know, uh, expectations. And so, if you're a bit of grotesque, if you're a freak of some kind, if you're someone that Carl, you know, would be impressed by or, um, you know, alarmed by, then you can get in touch with Rick, and he can put you in there. Women with beards little midget fellas, whatever, whatever it does not fit the usual should norm. We, should we cut along? <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> the three of us next week. We won't, oh, have, we won't have much to do after next week. Mm. You know, Ricky's got a bit of a singing voice on him. <laughs> I'm learning to play Blowing in the Wind on the keyboard by Bob Dylan. Yeah. So I can master that. I don't know what you can do. You, oh, can, you, dance, can, dance. you can dance, you can dance, can't you? You know that, you've done it, you've done dancing, so. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you little know. Little donkey. We'll have a hair at Christmas. <laughs> Perfect. I'm good at that. What were you meant to be playing when you did Little Donkey in the play? Drums to We Three Kings. But you just busted live, didn't you? On, that. On the just talking about looks and stuff, right? <laughs> Always. Because, um, you know, it, it, sort of cheeky freak of the week, we did that and I stopped mm. doing it. Sure. It was upsetting a few people. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a thing <laughs> on the website the other day about Elephant Man, yeah. right? Just keeping up to... You know, up on the news, what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the drunky th news. They did, they did a thing about him and what he'd look like if his head wasn't messed up. Yeah, yeah. And they made a little picture for him. Was he quite good looking? Not bad looking, but you can't use it. It's not like you can't you can't put it on a passport. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, and the fact that he's been dead for several <laughs> years. Yeah. No, but they also do that sort of thing for people who are alive. They say this is what you look like. So you can't use it for that. Yeah. You can't use it. On isn't like, that like, that's sort of like rubbing it in, though, isn't it? Really, it's is a bit. Yeah. yeah. Unless they said good news, you were ugly anyway. <laughs> yeah. To be quite honest, you, you wouldn't have pulled it. You, you didn't look at them. If you were symmetrical, you weren't a looker. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. couldn't use it on a little dating agency picture. This is what I look like. Yeah. yeah. This, is what, this is what I would have looked like. And they phone up and go, I'm intrigued. What do you mean would have looked like? <laughs> well, I see you, as we said, seven o'clock. How will I recognise you? I'll be eating buns. Yeah, look for the giant cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, in a coat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love the fact that you're keeping up, keeping up to date with what the elephant man might have looked like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is amazing. Carl's news is largely what's happening in around, around 1880. Yeah, yeah, or what might, well, might have happened exactly, around yeah. 1880. No, but it's yeah. sad though. Did you watch that thing in the week? That what are you staring at program? I didn't know. I couldn't face it. it did, I know what you mean. It was about people who'd had unfortunate deformities. Yeah, it? yeah, and it was it was really sad. I suddenly felt bad about you know some of the stuff we yeah. talked about and what have you. Because <laughs> can I just say something like that, that's quite a nice thing to say. I suddenly felt bad about some of the things we talked about. Should we go over what we've discussed today? What? What subjects have we brought up today? How can you feel sorry about things like that when we're still doing it? 
No, well, I'm, just, I'm just saying, you know, you have a laugh and that, but then you see a programme about it and you go, oh. What, you realise they're real people you're talking about? Yeah. When do you ever forget that? When do you ever forget that when you bring up these cheeky freaks of the weeks, or when we talk about Rick Waller, that <laughs> there's not a real person on the other end uh, thinking about it? Yeah, but sometimes it's hard because they don't look like real people. <laughs> Play a record! Don't snag off Rick Waller. <laughs> that girl was on with a big head. <laughs> it's like bow selector. We played some, uh, Dizzy Rascal earlier. And, and that was wicked! <laughs> exactly, and he's the new kind of, uh, the kind of London rap sensation. Yeah, yeah. But let's not forget credit to the nation from 1994. They're Teenage from Birmingham sensation. now, Steve. Whatever happened to MC Fusion, he got a lot of bad press at the time, people didn't respect him, but I'm listening to that now, I think it was bloody brilliant. Yeah. Alright? And crucial, and that. <laughs> exactly, adverts. <laughs> Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Stephen Merchant, and that little, this little bald head a mank over there is Carl Pilkington. cock a leaky soup? cock a leaky soup is fine. That was one from Nick, thanks for that Nick. Yeah. Is it Cock's referring to the woman who chewed on a knob in a goulash. <laughs> exactly. People, if, you've, uh, if you've just tuned in, you've missed that there, is Yeah. We just still don't know why she was eating goulash. I've got a rash, look, come up on my arm, look at that. Brilliant, fascinating, thanks for that. That's from rubbing his head, getting him in headlock, and it's, uh, have you got some on your hair? Cos look at that, that's like a heat rash. What do you wash your hair with? It's have you still got that bird shit behind your ear? What is that? That's really worrying, isn't it? It's like how, uh, like, the body changes over many years of sort of <laughs> certain things. Yeah. It's like your body changes to protect yourself from the sun and what have you. Yeah. My head. Just got used to being rubbed. <laughs> yeah. It's reacting now. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, that's a defence mechanism, is it? Yeah. Yeah, right, I see. All right. Look at that, that's horrible. Anyway. Um, You've got something on your air, you know. Monkey news? I was gonna say, the winner. I don't think anyone cares. Oh, come on, it, uh, someone got all of them, didn't they? Well, okay, play it again then. This was Songs of Phrase, you did the The well-known phrase is Galileo, stop talking about science, make me television. <laughs> The most convoluted, banal quiz on any radio station ever. I mean, I'm including Moyles, Chris Evans, do you know what I mean? Simon Bates. That's worse than anything they ever did. Apparently, uh, Channel 5 have bought the right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, anyway, what were the answers, Carl? We had Queen in there, Altered Images, Thomas Dolby. Yeah. Uh, Beatles, Aretha Franklin, and uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Well, extraordinarily, Tracy and John Burton from Colchester and Essex got all of those right. Why they would want the prizes, I've no idea, but good luck to them. They can enjoy those, uh, at some point. God bless. Okay, Monkey News? Do you want a bit? Yes, please. Play jingle. the jingle. This rash is weird. Oh, chimpanzee that, Monkey News! Right. Uh, right, they were filming a... A documentary, right? This telly company. Yeah. Doing a documentary. Who? Which one? Which one? Which I one? I don't know. No? Well, what was the documentary about? About monkeys. Yeah. Uh, where was it? Where Africa. was it? Right? Where, when was this? I haven't got a date. Okay. Recently, though, since the advent of television, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, a bit of extra monkey news if you, <laughs> if you want it. Okay, always. Do you know the, um... Monkey news extra. Go on. Do you know the Halfords ads? Halfords ads? I don't think so, no, what happens? Halfords, they've, they've, uh, you know, they sell nuts and bolts and stuff. Right. Uh, they were using monkeys in the ads. Okay. Um. Yeah. And what, what happened? happened? Don't they sell bikes, Halfords? Well, mainly. <laughs> Bicycles and, and motorbike stuff in that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so they're using monkeys in the ever what happened? <laughs> I can't handle it. What? I can't do this. Look what? at him. Look at him. <laughs> I don't care what he's doing. <laughs> and it, well, basically, right, they've, uh, they, uh, there was a load of hassle because they were using these monkeys in this alpha advert. <laughs> yes. Right. And what happened? Get to the point. It turned out it wasn't a problem because they were mechanics in the first place. Well, they were monkey mechanics. Yeah. What are you talking about? Mental. What are you talking about? That's not a story. Well, anyway, listen. Let's get let's get back on. <laughs> they to were it. mechanics in the first place. <laughs> right. Listen. Right. So they're making this documentary. Right. And uh, stumble across a, a little gang of uh, little gang. 
<laughs> Come on, just get on with it, please. Little, little gang of monkeys. That's yes. the first time I've ever laughed. Don't hear that. I know. Well, brilliant. What do you want? A cake? <laughs> Come on. Can we play a song? Oh, I don't understand what is wrong with you, you freak. It's making me laugh. <laughs> just tell us the story. All right then. All right. <clears throat> So anyway, right, so there's this, this documentary being made, they found a little gang of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> right, play a song, I don't know what's going on here, I apologise. Got a high to love away. According to the Beatles on XFM 104.9, I'm looking to with me, Steve Merchant. Right, Carl, come right, on, where, monkey where news. Where Everyone's we? composed, the jingle, please. Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Right. right, where were we? We were just start again. <laughs> There's some people making a documentary. <laughs> for what? Okay. For making a documentary in, uh, in the jungle and that. Right. Stumble across a little gang. <laughs> okay, okay, go on! Alright. Um... A little gang of monkeys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on! So the camera crew are there filming it. Yes. Everything's going normal. It's nothing, nothing yeah. odd about it. Okay. <laughs> they don't- they're not running a restaurant, they've not got any barber shops, nothing. No. Just regular monkeys going about their business, yeah. So anyway, uh, mm. the- what- what normally happens is the monkeys <laughs> sleep with the partner. They <laughs> 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 what? They- they don't sort of sleep around and that. Once they oh, find well, the- once they, they find the girlfriend or the boyfriend or whatever, yeah. they stick- they stick with them, right? <laughs> okay. But anyway, they were watching this one, right? And, uh, it's- it's going around a bit, sleeping around. Oily. And it was getting fatter. <laughs> they thought this is a bit odd. Yeah. Right? So, uh, followed it round. <laughs> and, uh, see it having it away. Turns out, little prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! It's a little monkey prostitute. And it was getting fatter because it was charging them bananas. <laughs> <laughs> What a load of old rubbish! <laughs> what is charging on bananas? <laughs> what was it? A boy or it was a woman? Little woman monkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most extraordinary monkey news I've ever heard. Oh, that is genius! Has this documentary been televised? Mm. Uh, I don't think it's been on yet. <laughs> no. And that's all the information you've got. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and is that that's um, that's one banana for everything? Now, half a banana is for Just all. Uh, a poor job. Right. Um, if you want full-blown uh, monkey sex, <laughs> it is two and a half bananas. Sure. Sure. So, uh, Let's just play a song. Okay. <laughs> Let's just play a Alright, well this is our penultimate show, which we'll be back next week. We're gonna make it a barnstormer, I'm sure, lads. I want 100% behind it, 110% next week. Alright, none of this giggling, none of this infantile giggling, okay. like two schoolboys. Right. All right, we're gonna come back, we're gonna have some quality monkey news next week, we're gonna have all kinds of treats, I would think. Okay. Some great prizes. All right? Are yeah. we okay? Yeah, we best show. Let's that. make next week the best show ever. Good luck. If you miss it, then you miss out. We're ending with a track from a couple of years back, I think it was 92, 93, uh, Dinosaur Junior, Start Chopping. Play that. Start playing. Forget Start <laughs> Chopping, start playing. All right. All right? See you next week. Yeah. <laughs> Five past one then, already, of a Saturday, so I'm Ricky Gervais, that was Placebo, yeah, with special needs, which brings me to my next point, with me Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, there he Steve is. Steve Merchant. 104.9. That's it. We're back then. Well, for one last time. Well, it's certainly the end of the season, we're away for at least, you know, two months, we're doing the office special, um, and possibly forever, depending on whether Carl decides he wants to carry on with this, because, I mean, we do this for fun. We don't need to do this. We don't need to do this for, you know, uh, um, money, obviously not. The kind of money you're earning, Rick, you do not need to do this. I don't need right. to do it. It's honestly beneath me. Yeah. You know, we don't need to do it to further our career because it's embarrassing being Didn't on your XFM. And say, do not even bother cashing those XFM checks. It's I'd not worth your while. No, it's not. It's not it, yeah. yeah, the time it took to sign them, <laughs> exactly, it, it, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't worth it. Um, so we do this basically to ridicule Carl. Uh, on, a, on a large sort of platform, I say large platform. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, excellent. Um, no other, no other radio station I mean, will it's, have it's us. It's roughly the same as standing up in McDonald's. I imagine so. Uh, but uh, but of a yeah. lunchtime though. Yeah, yeah. Um, or so when it's just the cleaning staff mopping <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in the, if Carl doesn't come back, he's breaking up the uh, three-way partnership. He's very much forever. Sting, isn't he? 
Um, yeah. In about, what, 1986, 87? Uh, exactly. You know, he's gonna go off and sort of make some quite poor, sort of jazz-inflected white man soul. Yeah. And leaving us to, you know, go about our business. Play pizza places. Um, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm gonna go into sort of maybe writing Say, say Dad, place. why can't I be in the CIA? <laughs> yeah. You don't know anything about it, you're a drummer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, do you think anyone cares? I wouldn't have thought so. Because I think if someone was interested in having some good chat and some great laughs, they'd spend mm. some more time with their friends. Yeah. Or listen to another radio station. Or listen station, to a decent radio show. I think like that, yeah. they listen to XFM for some music to have on in the background that's loud enough yeah. so they can hear it while they're hoovering. Yeah. I don't think our fans hoover. Well, true. I think true. you've got to have- Or shoot up, whatever. I think you've got to have a house <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. to hoover. I tell you what I do want though, some great music. They do indeed. They'll be saying, since you've been gone. See that? Oh, That's the sort of link I can do if we, if we stay together. If you together. could cut out all the other drivel you speak, you'd be great on magic. I uh, know, uh, yeah. Um, you've got a... Come on. You've got a, you, I know, you've got a rainbow something, haven't rainbow. you? Rainbow. You've got a rainbow.